Hey guys, I just want to spend some time today to talk about why you should be vegan. Uh, it's an issue that's really close to me, um, especially involving the environmental, environmental and ethical reasons for going vegan. But I'm going to address the health issues for um, a little bit as well. I'm also going to address how um, you can improve your life and um, how, what stuff you can eat when you're vegan. And it's perfectly a healthy dietary choice too. Um, I find this issue com really compelling and important to me. And if people who you know, meat eaters and dairy consumers knew all about this stuff, they wouldn't. They wouldn't be. They wouldn't be meat eaters or um, dairy consumers. They wouldn't be propping up this horrible, the meat industry and the dairy industry. They wouldn't be propping up these horrible atrocities. And to help me um, explain why you should be vegan, I'm going to use this pamphlet. You might have seen it. Why Vegan uh, Boycott Cruelty. This one. Well, you might have seen it a lot and you might have even just tossed it away or barely looked at it, grazed it. It deserves close a close look. It really does, because if you are if you regard yourself as a morally decent person, if you regard your family or your friends as a morally decent person, you should check it out. You should read it for yourself. But I'm gonna use the sources in it to help me. And you know, if you regard yourself as a morally decent person, if you care about the environment at all you should definitely check it out and you should definitely continue listening to this video now I'll come back in a second and talk to you about this pamphlet hey guys um, the first part of this is talking about the transformation of animals into food it says many people believe that animals raised for food must be treated well because sick or dead animals would be of no use to agribusiness this is not true it simply isn't true because um, they feed them antibiotics and hormones to increase the productivity and to keep them healthy, or not to keep them healthy, to keep them alive in the first place. But their enclosures do not keep them healthy. They do the exact opposite. They never see the light of day and they're crowded in tiny shelters where, where they atrophy, their limbs atrophy and they become sick and possibly even starve in many of these places so it's really a sick look into the meat industry that I'm about to show you and the dairy industry um, industrialized cruelty factory farming the competition to produce inexpensive meat eggs and dairy products has led to animal agri has led animal agribusiness to treat animals as objects and commodities the worldwide trend is to replace small family farms with factory farms, large warehouses where animals are confined in crowded cages or pens or in restrictive stalls. US, U.S. society is extremely naive about the um, nature of agricultural production. If the, you, if the public knew more about the way in which agricultural and animal production infringes on animal welfare, the outcry would be louder. That was from Dr. Bernard E. Rollin from Farm Animal Welfare, Iowa State University, 2003. And I'm going to provide all of the sources in the annotations um, that you might see pop up or um, down below in the underwear drawer. And yeah, I'm going to put all the sources that this um, pamphlet cites. And all of them are credible or 95% of them are very credible sources. They can definitely be trusted to provide accurate information as to these atrocities and the environmental impacts and such. And on the environmental impacts, I'd say you can't be a meat-eating environmentalist. It's just not possible. But that, that's aside from the topic at hand, and I'll get into that later. 
Uh, Dr. Bernard Rollin also explains that it is more economically efficient to put a greater number of birds into each cage, accepting lower productivity per bird, but greater productivity per cage. Individual animals may produce, for example, gain weight in part because they're immobile yet suffer because of the inability to move. Chickens are cheap. Cages are expensive. In a November 1993 article in favor of reducing space from 8 to squ 6 square feet per pig, industry journal National Hog Farm Farmer advised crowding pigs pays. So it shows how dedicated they are to profit and not helping these animals at, at all or reducing their suffering at all. Uh, birds. Virtually all U.S. birds raised for food are factory farmed. Inside the densely populated buildings, enormous amounts of waste accumulate. The resulting ammonia levels commonly cause painful burns to the bird's skin, eyes, and respiratory tracts. To reduce losses from birds pecking each other, farmers cut a third to a half of the beaks off chickens, turkeys, and ducks. The birds suffer severe pain for weeks. Some, unable to eat afterwards, starve. Egg-laying hens. Packed in cages typically less than half a square foot um, of floor space per bird, and that's been slightly, very slightly expanded um, in the state of California due to the passing of um, Prop 2. But um, it also says hens can become immobilized and die of asphyxiation or dehydration because of the small sh enclosures. Decomposing corpses are found in cages with live birds. By the time hens are sent to slaughter for low production, their skeletons are so fragile th that many suffer broken bones during catching, transport, or shackling. Yeah, and because of hormones, they also grow to large sizes to where their skeletons can't support them. They become very weak, and their limbs are obviously atrophied. They just simply become fat, fat meat, you know. For modern animal agriculture, the less the consumer knows about what's happening um, before the meat hits the plate, the better. If true, is this an ethical si situation? Should we be reluctant to let people know what really goes on because we're not really proud of it and concerned that it might turn them to vegetarianism? And the answer simply is no. That's just not right. It's not right in any sense of the word. And that was from Dr. Peter Cheek.